thought about doing this <coughs> series is while I'm driving. I'm doing a lot more driving nowadays. I haven't driven this much since I used to own a studio in San Diego. I used to drive back and forth from Temecula to San Diego and back. I used to I used to like to talk to people as I drove because it was easier to kind of keep my mind right, keep stay awake, stay alert. A friend of mine, there were a lot of long stretch that to ride with me. Derek Sanders, that dude used to sleep, and Derek used to fall asleep. I don't think if anything had happened just along the way, you wouldn't have known until we woke up somewhere. But it was funny. For a while, I've been, the Lord's been pressing on me to make sure my kids knew. I just really want my sons to know, not necessarily me and who I am, even though I think it's great, I need them to know that they'll come a time in their lives and they'll want to know, you know, what, were their, what was their dad all about, what did he do, and how did he live, and it's something that's important to me right now, because I can't get that from my dad, I'm, I'm the youngest of my siblings, so the time that I was with my parents, I think it was a selfish time, and I, and I, I think it is what it is, right, I mean, we're younger, we don't think about other people, we just think every day is promised, we think every day is alright, we think we think that we're promised and guaranteed tomorrow, but I've learned over the last few years, there's nothing guaranteed except for death, some people you say death and taxes, right, but you know, some states don't even have that, I guess they have federal taxes, I guess, maybe they are, right? but in any case, I want my kids to know, you know, as much as I can tell them, as much as I can teach them, and, and again, I'm, I'm not trying to say that my parents didn't teach me, you know, siblings, other siblings didn't teach me, but but, I, but I, I want to make sure they know who I am, there's things about my dad I'll never know, largely because I didn't ask, it wasn't important to me, but I want my kids to know, so boys, I, this is what I'm doing for you, um, I really don't care what anybody else thinks, I not even sure of the content which will come about from each episode, but we're going to start doing these episodes, these series is we're calling I Want You to Know. This is episode one. Today I'm driving into work, and then I woke up this morning, I just, just didn't feel, you know, you have those real emotional days, you just don't feel happy, sad, or, well, yeah, you just feel gooey, where anything makes you want to feel like you just want to just lose it, just erupt, whether it be anger or sadness or, I can't even say any, or, because I don't think I, would, I don't think I felt like erupting in a bunch of laughter, right, but, those are the days you really have to push through, you really have to pull on and draw on and stand on everything that the Lord has told you, and that you know to be true, because those are the days when you feel this kind of way. Those are the days when the enemy just wants you to give up, where you just think, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't, I don't want to push. I don't, I don't want to be a part of anything larger than me. You just, if you allow yourself to do that, those days become more and more frequent, where you give up more and you decide to, you know, maybe one day you just decide, that, hey, I'm going to take my own life, you know, screw it to hell with it. I don't, I don't care anymore. But that's what the enemy wants. The enemy wants you to feel, he wants me to feel, wants us to feel like we're not worth it, that we can't do it, that the the road at the end is nothing but the end of a tunnel and not a, sorry, I'm sorry, the end of a cave and not the end of a tunnel that you actually do pass through on the other side. I need my kids to know, I need you to know, sons, that there's anything we've gone through, it's for a reason, it's for a purpose, it's to make us better to help other people. I, I, I get it. There's days when I don't really give a damn about other people. Days I don't want to help anybody. <laughs> the days I don't even, I don't even think I want to help me. But you get through those days. There are other days when you smile and you laugh and you don't remember any of the pain. Yeah, it may. It'll still be there. It'll, the pain will never really ever go away, but, and I'm not saying you ever grow numb to it, it just becomes a dull ache, I'm just saying there's days when the pain will be less, and there's days when the pain will be more, and there's 
days when you'll laugh. There's days when you'll cry. There's days when you'll be angry for just no good reason. And then there's days you'll be angry for good reasons, you know? I mean, it's, it's just what it is. But I smile and I, and I think about doing this series because I, I did a, I did one coming back from Vegas, right? It was just my thoughts on a Vegas trip. I can't say hour, right? It's just me. But I guess I can say hour because the Holy Spirit was with me, so I'm not alone, right? So when I was coming back from Vegas, I did my thoughts on not having been to Vegas, Vegas since Sandy was alive. But now I'm I was talking to a friend of mine and she's a widower also and she says you know you really should do more of those you should do those as you drive and you know it helps people and I'm thinking yeah but in helping other people we 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 do hurt a lot there's and then I guess I have to really look at it as this is really what's supposed to happen because it hurts a lot and not really sure how much of that I wanted to pour out on these videos. But in any case, I have to tell the truth with it, right? That's what my wholeheartedly book is all about. It's what I'm writing, it's what I've been writing, what I need to finish. I had three chapters into that book and I stopped writing it. I stopped writing them because I got to the hard part. I got to the part where I really didn't want to feel anymore. I didn't want to feel that pain of loss anymore. I didn't want to deal with that crap anymore. But you know what? I don't deal with it. It just gets worse and worse and worse. And it begins to manifest in other ways. You know, because you know, I always want my kids to know, you know, Dad, did, what did you feel like when Mom died? You know, I heard a lot. Guys, I mean, I did. And I, th- and I think, obviously, in a lot of ways, I still do. And I think I hurt more now because I watched you guys. And there's moments when you all have pain and, and suffering and or anxiety or whatever you want to call it. And those are momentary things. And a lot of the ways I think, man, that's my fault. I should have done better. I should have protected you more. I, you know, I should have made some different choices. But if we stand on Romans 8, 28, you know, all things work together for those who love God and are called according to his purposes. So I, I have to believe that even if I have made mistakes with money, made mistakes with life, and, but it's not my fault that mom's not. So I couldn't protect you from those that hurt. Lord knows I wanted to. Can't protect you guys from school or from people. I can only show you and tell you that no matter what happens to you, you can't ever give up. And I get the whole thought concept of sticks and stones may break your bones. But names do hurt. People are going to say things to you. People are going to say things about you. And it hurts a lot. But, you guys, you have to remember that you can't give up. And it really doesn't matter what anybody says to you or about you. As long as you know who you are on the inside, that matters. I don't have to agree with you, Right? But as long as you are committed to yourselves, committed to who you are, committed to God, I mean, that's what matters. That's what makes the days when it gets hard like this easy to deal with. Because I tell you, when you put people on pedestals, meaning you put the make idols out of them, meaning you think you look so much up to who they are and you start to put them in place of God and you try to you're waiting so much for their approval and, and a new friend of mine um, we were actually at a team meeting and she had shared with our whole team about this uh, something that she had learned from a one of those Myers-Briggs-like Courses, seminars they had gone to talk about how well, I, I don't remember the exact the way the box is designed now but people try to go and make their lives looking for acceptance last in their lives when they're really striving for money and success and power 
first. Try to then find security and trust. And then last thing they, they really wind up with trying to always achieve ultimately is acceptance. And the reality is, and the way that the seminar goes on to show is that as Christians, we started acceptance. And with that acceptance, once we understand it and really spend some time with that acceptance and dealing with it, we go to trust. And we don't need to worry about anything else. We don't have to worry about achievements and accolades and things like that. We start at acceptance. And that is huge for us. It's huge for me this morning. Because even as I'm talking and sharing this as I drive, you know, as I'm pulling up here at work, it helps. It makes me feel so much better. And, and I feel better even from doing it. Sometimes, sometimes when you know you need to do something, starting is the hardest part. I was at a Prophet Judas Prince's um, launching of Sopar Ministries meeting on Sunday night. And one of the other evangelists that was there, he said, he was giving a word to another minister. and He said, the younger generation is waiting for the older generation to stand up and speak and tell them the truth. Help and lead and guide them. And I was like, man, I had to really look at myself. Am I doing that? What am I doing to do that? So I hope I'm doing some things, but there's more I need to do. And I think this video series is one of them. So guys, I love you all. Shane, Kaden, Ryan, Evan, Jackson, I love you all. And I know I don't say it enough. I hope these videos will help. And at some points in your life, you'll be able to look back. Even after I'm gone, and you'll be able to say, hey, this is what my dad said. And I'm proud of you all. I think you all are brilliant young men. You all can do anything and everything that the Lord's put in your path. I believe they should, you, that there's no failure in God. There's no failure in you because you are in God. As long as you believe wholeheartedly that God is your Lord and Savior. We're going to keep doing these things. We'll make them, we'll make them long. So if you can watch. So I want to go back and watch. Because I want to see how it helps. I want you all to be helped. I want this story to help someone. And I don't know what I don't even know what we're really calling it, other than I want you to know. And it, it's probably probably going to be a part of the whole Heart of these series and products and stuff. But you know what? Episode one. Love you guys. Have a great day.